Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 14, Episode 52. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. An emergency episode of the Tuesday Podcast. We'll have a regular show on Wednesday still. But Dave, big news of the day. Blake Martinez is being signed to the Pittsburgh Steelers practice squad. No, Matt Canada is out as Steelers offensive coordinator. He has been fired by Mike Tomlin, by the Pittsburgh Steelers, a combination of uh, running backs coach Eddie Faulkner and quarterbacks coach Mike Sullivan will take his place. So that is the news that came across, announced by the team shortly after 8.30 uh, Tuesday morning. Matt Canada, relieved of duties. Oh, is that why you got me on this thing? (laughs) Is that what happened? No, uh, we talk about it all the time. You've done this for quite a while now. You never know what you're going to wake up to. And you literally woke up to it this, uh, <laughs> uh, this morning. Uh, uh, the guys were all chatting about it uh, after uh, getting the news up and all like that. And uh, I had to make sure that wasn't a bogus uh, <laughs> Steelers uh, Twitter account there when it, when it came across initially there. But uh, yeah, look, uh, uh, big news. Uh you know, overall, you know, you can look at this. Is it expected, unexpected? Well, according to the you know Steelers' history, you know, this is a big surprise. I mean, we haven't seen. Uh, uh, well, I've never technically seen anything like this happen. <laughs> go all the way back to what 1940 something. Uh, uh, was kind of the last time, and we we've talked about it quite a bit over the years about how how the Steelers you know don't have the track record of of of, of relieving uh, a coordinator during the season and all like that. And uh, but you know there there's a first time for everything, or a, a first time in a long time for everything, and uh, the trend how has has now been broken. Uh, I think if you look at this in the rearview mirror and what all obviously has happened with the offense and lack of offense and you know everything that goes along with it, you know it it, it it's it's not surprising at its root. I, I the the biggest surprise is that this happened as late in the season and with the team at six and four and, and yada, yada. But even so, you know, no, nobody would disagree that this feels like it's been a smoke and mirrors six and four. Uh, obviously this team, you know, having problems moving the football, scoring points. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, uh, that's where we're at now. And, you know, I, I see a lot of people already talking and, 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 and trying to jump on both sides of this saying, well, is this actually Mike Tomlin's decision or, you know, Jerry Dulac of the post Gazette first, first thing this morning uh, reported that this was uh, Art Rooney. The second decision, Mike Tomlin came out during his press conference, said, this is my decision, my decision alone. Uh, does, does, does this matter? I mean, it's going to matter to, to, to some, because some are going to say what well, took Art Rooney, uh, to, to finally pull the trigger on this, where whereas Mike Tomlin should have pulled it weeks ago. Where, where do you come in on, on all the battle of who actually made the decision here? Well, it's hard. No one, we don't know. It and doesn't matter. It does, right. I was going to say, I'm less interested in that because it doesn't, what, what you're all saying, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter really who made the call. The fact is the call was made. Mike Tomlin says it was his and his decision alone. There may be other inputs. You can believe that or not. To me, in this moment right here, right now, it does not matter. Matt Canada is gone. And, and that's the headline. That's the importance. That's the talking point today. Because as you referenced, this is a historically unprecedented move by the Pittsburgh Seagulls. They, to my knowledge, have never fired a coordinator in the middle of a season before ever in their entire history. Go back to 41, talk about Burt Bell, uh, Buff Dinelli, those kind of things, all obscure, you know, things that don't really matter right now. But in terms of a coordinator, midseason does not happen. So the question is, to me, the more relevant question is, what made the team make this change right now to pull off a move they've never pulled off before? Yeah, and, you know, back to real, real quick, you know, the argument, I, I understand why, because people want something to pin it on, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 
well, you know, the, the anti Tomlin crowd will want it uh, uh, framed as, as Art Rooney making the decision. Uh, that way it looks worse on, on Tomlin, that Tomlin didn't have the gojones to do this and, uh, you know, vice versa. To me at this point, you know, uh, we'll see what comes out in the wash as far as who really did what. But I think the, 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 root, the root thing is here is kudos to whoever pulled the trigger. Uh, on, on this one, because and and the reason why, I mean, I I don't think we have to go deep into the reason why and and why now, right? I mean, look, I will say this: we talk about those final two series that the Steelers had in that game against Cleveland. Uh, despite you know how bad they played throughout the game and everything that transpired before then, you had a golden opportunity there in two series to uh to win that game, and it just it it you want to talk about looking uh you know uh uninspiring uh mm. that was it. I mean those those you look at those those two final two series, and then obviously go on to lose the game, and then look we we talked about this too, uh. Just the at you know what Najee had to say post game and mm-hmm. Deontay and you know they obviously have something going on in that locker room. Was it mostly because a lot of those players don't have confidence in what they're trying to do offensively? That very well could play a big part in it. You know, uh, and it wouldn't be surprising if it did. But you know they're not putting up enough points. I mean, you know, Matt, Matt Canada will always be remembered for one thing. We got to score more points and they never did that. And then when you throw on top of it, that we've seen no progression with, 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 with Kenny Pickett this year. In fact, we've seen regression uh, in that. And this team's still very much in, in the hunt of a playoff spot. Uh, you know, that, that, and scoring just 10 points, you know, coming out of this game against Cleveland in a, in a, in a divisional game, got another divisional game coming up. It all adds up as to the why. To me, my initial thought, and I still feel this now, is a large reason why this move was made. And there's many variables to it, as Mike Tomlin said. And obviously, just a production results-oriented output is how coaches and teams and players are judged. And those results were, of course, poor. But to what you mentioned, I feel like Tomlin really felt that frustration very close to a boiling point. Again, to see, for us to feel the frustration on the outside, players barely able to kind of contain it when they speak to the media, you can only imagine what things are like behind closed doors on that bus ride home from Cleveland, you know, for example. So my my thought is Tomlin knew how close this thing was to kind of blowing up and to almost save the locker room and try to keep this team together as they're six and four and trying to fight for the playoffs, something had to give. And that give was Matt Canada. And again, the results were not there. Canada certainly ripe for all the criticism. Um, but I think that frustration might have been the thing that was driving the team to make this move. Yeah, that's a good frame. That, that's a good framing on your part. Uh, uh, and, you know, Mike Tomlin went on to say that, you know, there's a lot of layers to this, yada, yada. And, Look, we don't know the actual play calls. You know, uh, we we we've watched enough tape over the years uh, of this, where you know we see a lot of the same things and can discern what they're trying to do on certain things. But I mean, it's 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 gotten to the thing where you open up that all twenty two and you think, you know, e- even after a win, you're thinking, oh man, I gotta you know I gotta watch this six more times and all like that. And you know, uh, uh, several have been uh, you know several players asked about the predictability. Yeah, I I think Najee what what Najee said and what Najee didn't say spoke volumes within sure. that. And sure. uh, I think a lot of them felt that way. You could really uh, uh, Deontay in his press conference on 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 Monday just a body language overall and uh, you know. You got to score touchdowns in this business, as Mike Tomlin said. You got to win games in this business, and just the totality of of it uh, has us where we are. Uh, and you know that that that's why the decision uh, w- was made. But yeah, I I think in a nutshell, boiling it back down to kind of your shorter framing of of it. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm in agreement. And, and I say that also because. You know, had Pittsburgh wanted to make the change solely for a production based reason, they had ample opportunities prior to this to do it. They could have done it last year when I think it was justified. They should have fired Matt Canada last year after the 2022 season wrapped up. They could have done it at the bye week last year or after the season. Both great times to do it when you're sitting there two and six, the things are wreck. 
That would or have been this, or this bye week. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was getting there. Yeah, or, or this bye week would have made sense as well. You had a winning record, but things weren't obviously going the way that, that you thought that it would. So the question of why now, because it, it's pretty late in the season to make this change too. And again, you're six and four. You are, if the, if the season ended today, the Steelers are in the playoffs. So the question right. is why make that change right here, right now? I think obviously the bottoming out of this passing offense against the Browns is one part, but the other part that comes from that is the frustration, the anger, and not wanting to almost have, I don't want to say mutiny, but just this 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 tension in the locker room. Like they're six and four and they're pissed. They're six and four and they're so angry, and rightfully so, but that's got to be corrected. And Canada's the guy to go. It's a hell of a way to get around the question is of, of why was was there any Najee questions they asked today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was not one. You'd be surprised. To, to uh, that's a hell of a way to get around from answering those questions. But look, I mean, everybody listening to this, uh, uh, I, I'm not there, there's probably not anyone listening to this that that's thinking. I'm kind of wondering if they made the right move there uh, uh, or, or, or dissatisfied with, with the move and all like that uh, overall there. You know, the timing, once again, is unique, but uh, in, in the same respect, I mean, what 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 did we have to look forward to with this offense had had they kept him? You know, uh, there was no reason to think that mm-hmm. we were going to see. And look, uh, the, the rest of the story is yet to be written in these last seven games. But at least you do have seven games now. We talked on the live stream uh, last night, right, that uh, uh, what ha- what would happen if you did, you know, uh, at least it would give you an opportunity to uh, call up uh, Eddie Faulkner and, 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 and Mike Sullivan Mike to Sullivan, the main, yep. you know, to the main stage here. That's, and, that's a, that's a framing for it. Yeah. Uh, kind of showing my age and my background <laughs> by, by using that Mike Sullivan to the main stage, please. <laughs> Mike Sol- uh, Eddie Faulkner to the main stage, please. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, you get where I'm coming from here sure. because now, uh, you, they're, they're on the clock now and, now you easily get past the part of if this thing doesn't improve of kind of being faced with a, do we go from within and, and see what that looks like? And then wasting, potentially wasting more time. You already know what you had in Canada. Now you've got a chance. Uh, uh, and look, it's hard to bring in an offensive coordinator on the outside this time of year anyway. Right. You know, Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure any team that's done it in recent history. I and mean, maybe there's besides like the Colts hiring Jeff Saturday, but that's a whole <laughs> Different can of worms. All right. So you take the keys away from Matt Canada. You send them out the door. You turn them over to a combination of Eddie Faulkner and, and Mike Sullivan, two guys that have been around and, 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 and know this team and probably have got their own ideas with this thing and turn them loose and see what they can do. And sure. once again, you've got seven games and you've got a very important one coming up uh, on, on Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, can you guys get this thing where <laughs> Mike Thomas, uh, uh, he had a key key point where he said, we need to score more points to help engineer victory. You think, you know, that was in honor of Matt Canada. One last one of those comments. Right. I mean, a game plan just can't be what we have talked about. How many times over the last couple of years of going out there? Don't turn the football over, Kenny. Uh, let's get the defense to hold them under 17 points. Let's get this thing to the fourth quarter. Hope nothing and hope our defense can make a, uh, respectable takeaway. Uh, we, we even got to the point where we're talking about, is that a good takeaway? You know, uh, <laughs> right. it's not uh, a good uh, enough takeaway. We need better takeaways. Right. So, uh, look, the, the band-aid's been ripped off now. And now these guys have seven games to show that not only can they can they get this offense scoring points, but show that Kenny Pickett can make the expected second year jump for half a season or near a half season. I'll just share two more thoughts on Canada. I I mean, people can react however they want to. I'm not going to judge it, but for me personally, I don't take glee in Canada being fired because that's, that's a man losing his job. That's a a family that that's impacted. Um, And I just don't personally celebrate that. But I know people obviously are and it's it's the right decision and Canada was not coming back. So I just want to say that just on a personal level beyond that. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Beyond that. Well, I think in recent weeks, I put more of the blame on Kenny Pickett. And I think Canada has called some better games. I think against Tennessee was one of the best games he's ever called. 
Uh, the Browns game was not. I think the play calling was mediocre at best in that one. But I, I put, put more of the blame recently on Kenny Pickett. Regardless of that, it's a results-oriented business. And Mike Tomlin said that. And for three years, the Pittsburgh Steelers offense has been one of the worst in football. They've underwhelmed. They've not progressed. If anything, they've regressed. They, they statistically have regressed this year compared to where they were even in, in all of last year, but even especially the back half of last year when the offense was making progress. So it's it's a bottom line business. The results were not there. The totality of Canada's tenure in the two and a half seasons as OC were not there. So regardless of, of putting blame on players versus coaches versus whatever, you know, Canada's responsible for the results. And the results were abysmal, as bad as we've seen. Eight people pine for Randy Feetner. And I think things came to a head after Sunday's loss to the Browns. Look, I, I, I keep hating to go back to the explosive play, passing explosive play component. But once again, it astounds me how you can uh, go four games with just three passing explosive plays, even by sheer luck and somebody <laughs> missing a tackle right. or or something like that. You think you'd have a few more in that game. And thank God the running games produced them. Something we talked about on the on the on, on the live stream uh, and, and I think on that last podcast as well, too. So, uh, look, I thought Dan Orlovsky, the 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 uh, the, the quote that uh, Dan Orlovsky had earlier uh, today, you know, the pressure is now on Kenny Pickett to throw the ball past five yards down the field. Uh, uh, well, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, layers to this that you're wanting to see Kenny Pickett, uh, uh, improve on, uh, you know, uh, play to play, uh, type stuff, his pocket presence, obviously his ability to use the middle of the field, uh, his ability to push the football down the field. I mean, we can, we talk about his average yard, uh, average completion yardage being, you know, a hair over two yards in that last game. And it's obviously not great uh, over. I mean, you look at his intended air yards and his completed air yards distance for, for the season, those match up with a guy like Patrick Mahomes and, and Joe Burrow, but it's not the same. Uh, and especially I think third down is another thing that we really, really need to look at in this thing. And if I'm Mike Tom and I'm looking at, the, uh, I'm going back through that game and I'm looking at the box score, I'm saying, man, we were in a lot of these third and shorter situations. Why weren't we converting those? Because if you convert two or three more of those in that game, it's probably a big difference, especially late in this thing. And then going back once again, like I said, those final two drives, I mean, just very, I, I, I'll reiterate once again, uh, Alex, when it, when they started that second to last drive, uh, I'm, uh, I was honestly thinking to myself, damn, they're going to do it again. They're, they're going to, they're going to win this, you know, mm -hmm. and they did, and they didn't this time, uh, with, 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 you know, very two ugly drives there at the end of that game. Uh, and regardless of how you got there, it was a winnable game at that point. And had they won that game, Matt Cannon's probably still be, mm -hmm. he'd, still, he'd still be the coordinator today, wouldn't he? Yeah, you don't see those firings after a victory, so that's likely the case. And I know late in the game they were they had the chip Garrett and those pass rushers, but they were running three man routes against seven in coverage. It's just like you know, what are you expecting in that in that situation? And the results obviously were not there. Um, in an effort to try to keep this to a half hour, which we're already not going to be able to do, let's just kind of move on to conversation about right. who's next with Mike Sullivan. My, uh, Mike Tomlin says that Sullivan will be the play caller while Eddie Faulkner will be the actual offensive coordinator. And so Faulkner's role is going to be more of the Monday through Saturday management in terms of, let me get, let me actually get the quote from Mike Tomlin on what he defines Eddie Faulkner's role, the running backs coach being, he says, quote, organizing staff responsibility in meetings, organizing game planning, leading our unit as a collective in review of our tape and preparation of our upcoming opponents and things of that nature, things that a coordinator does. He has full authority in that regard and my support and quote. And again, referencing Mike Sullivan calling the actual plays, which makes sense. He's been a, a play caller many times before Tampa Bay back in the uh, early 2010s and most recently with the New York Giants for two seasons in 2016 and 2017. And of course, he's worked very closely with Kenny Pickett since he was drafted in 2022. So the question becomes, Dave, we, we've talked about, you know, you change OCs when this was you know, floated weeks ago during the bye, not going to be able to put in a whole new playbook. What can change under Sullivan and Faulkner? All right, here's what I envision based on 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 what we know and have seen, uh, and kind of what Mike Tomlin laid out there today as far as 
you know, who, 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 who's going to do what there's no doubt that this running game has come alive the last several weeks. And, and, and that's good to see. And, you know, you'd have to think that Eddie Faulkner gets some share of the, the, the credit for that. What this offense obviously needs to do and has it done in these last several weeks is building the passing game off of a successful running game. Correct. Agreed. If I'm Eddie Faulkner, my first goal as kind of the role, call, call it whatever you want to do, all OC game planning, whatever, is we are going to feature our running game. But now we have got to come up with a plan of building a passing game off of that running game. So that's where, to me, a lot of his input's going to come in on this and direction along with Mike Sullivan to help call plays, whether it be more play action, uh, motion, what have you, things that you can build off of your running game that look like a lot like what your running game is going to be. And, and especially on some early down stuff, I want opposing defenses to think we've seen them do this in the running game. It's a run, but it's not a run. Those kind of things. Uh, uh, in short, I expect the, the 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 focus of 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 Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan to build a downfield or further downfield I mean anything downfield uh off of their running game which has been quite good the last several weeks and the irony of that is that was supposed to be Matt Canada's thing that was kind of that Shanahan tree of marrying the run and pass game, you know, the boot game and the stretch zone game and those types of things and never really accomplished that. So that's what they're going to try to replicate. I agree. I think you have to be able to work better constraint place and build things off each other, even if it's not run game to pass game, it could be pass game, one concept that's similar or running the same concept from a different look to try to mix that up, but keep the reads easy for the quarterback that's young and struggling and trying to find his footing. That's going to be important. I, I thought Canada was maybe a bit better this year in doing some of that, but not to the level it needs to be for a young quarterback and a very fragile, or as you said, last night on the live stream, fragile offense right now. And then I think just putting more defenders in conflict. I just don't see this, pa this passing game really stressing guys too much. I thought Canada did some of that working out a bunch. It's one of the best things he did with the passing game this year but still not frequently enough overall from that or just in general with this passing attack. Again, you look at that final drive against Cleveland. I know they had to keep guys in and they were chipping the heck out of Garrett to slow him down in an obvious pass situation, but you got three man routes, you got two on the outside, one over the middle, you got seven in coverage. Who's in conflict there? I and mean, what defender is going to be stressed and having to make a decision between, do I go, go cover this guy or this guy? I mean, I, you just didn't see that much. The Yankee concepts were used some, and that did work to an extent and pick and miss some stuff. But again, just big picture, not just, um, zeroing in on, on this Browns game. It's not been there for this offense. It's been frustrating. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm hoping to see from this new little coaching staff. And you, 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 you talk about con uh, putting players in conflict and knowing at this point that opposing defenses are probably going to say, Hey, let's play more, let's you know, play, play, play more zone against these guys mm -hmm. here. Uh, why not you do something off of some play action stuff here uh, against maybe some zone looks where you, where you play the windows more, where you play uh, putting that linebacker in conflict uh uh, yep. with, with some middle of the field slants and stuff like that. Yo, uh, let's see if Kenny Pickett can, can understand the window con player in conflict, uh, structure and you know, look, nobody's expecting him to go out there and, and start connecting on passes, 14, 15, 16 yards down the field. But can you start connecting on some of these six and seven yard down the field with the guy running in space, uh, on the backside of, of a player, uh, being in, 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 in conflict in the middle mm -hmm. of the field. Sure. I, that, that's going to be a component of it uh, for sure. Some more yak opportunities, but I think just, just more concepts, whether it's a dagger concept mills, just stuff that stresses, you know, safeties in particular, because yeah, if you're going to see a lot of zone, that's when you can really kind of put these guys in conflict and, and, and flood zones and stress defenders, stress that safety, stress that nickel corner, whatever the case is. So that's what I, that that's what I'm looking for. That's what this offense needs going forward. The routes have just been too independent. It's been too, and that's not, Strictly a Canada thing. It's been happening, I think, for, for too long in Pittsburgh and, and prior regimes, but just too many of like, all right, receiver, go win your route. That, that's kind of been the basis of this passing game. And those talented receivers in Pittsburgh, the only a heck of a route runner Pickens has, has progressed, um, you know, overall this season, but it's just been too independent. And that's not a way to consistently win, especially when your offense is not overwhelming with talent and a quarterback that can be Peyton Manning and just light up the scoreboard. Obviously, Pittsburgh cannot. So you really have to elevate your scheme.
And I would think another thing that both uh, Faulkner and, and, and Mike Sullivan are talking about is how can we get Pat Frymuth more involved in this yeah. passing game? <laughs> middle, you know? middle of the field a little bit more, hopefully, under these guys. Yeah, look, even if you have to have some zone sits with him, you know, uh, complete that five yard pass to him, you know. Sure. I mean, just even some basic Hank concepts, which I know some people think is too antiquated, but if you get your five yards on first and 10, keeps you on schedule, I'm down for that. And, and Canada used some of that, but, you know, lately it's really been invisible and getting the tight ends involved, getting middle of the field more involved, Robinson, Austin, finding ways to get them the ball, even occasionally, just so it's not, just so your passing game is not solely built through two guys and Johnson and Pickens. The passing game should start there, should be the focal point, but it can't be the only two guys that's passing offense and really right. for most of the season. I know Johnson's been hurt, but you know, mostly it's been those two guys when they're healthy. And look, we're also not calling for, you know, 19 passes over the middle of the field, more than 12 yards down the field, but it would be nice to start seeing some daggers or, or maybe a few more Yankees or, 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 or Mills concepts. Some of those things Look, uh, uh, the, 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 the kind of the smash and divide stuff, you mm -hmm. know, in certain situations can be run, uh, those kind of things there. But what we, I mean, if anything, we should start seeing these passing charts looking like they got some green dots, <laughs> 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 like, like, you know, green dots in this thing, you know, seven or more yards down the field, you know, it doesn't take much to register. It feels like it right now uh, to, to, to register a completed air yard distance of around six to seven yards. You know, you mix in a couple of deep, deep connected balls along with some, some, some five and six yard past line of scrimmage connections. You're there. Right. And, and that, that's what we need need to see and look i you know i i'll boil it all down to this can in these final seven games can they get kenny pickett to a, adjust a net yard for, for passing attempt number of six or more if they do that that means there's touchdowns passes happening it means the the sacks aren't heavy and it means that the interceptions aren't heavy there and it means that there's a you know, handful more yards along with it uh that's got to be the goal you have got to we have got to see uh, and, and look, you can't lose what you have in the running game right now, because that's been really, really good right now. And, and I don't think you'll see much change, uh, with that at all. Uh, but can you build off of that and get any kind of down, you know, downfield passing game and then get some yak that comes along all the kind of stuff that we were talking about before the season date, date back like that. But I mean, look, it's no easy chore. Uh, uh, ahead of these two, but at least they know what they're doing well at this point. Uh, they know probably what needs to be changed, and now we'll see if they can do it over the next seven games. And I do think even though the playbook can't be thrown out and totally rewritten, you can have improvements with a change in, in personnel just from the, the how you approach things week to week, how you self-scout, how you call games, a sequence of plays, which I think has been what Canada's biggest failing is just a sequence of play calling in-game. All that can be changed when you have a different person doing that job. So, yeah, there's not going to be any radical shifts to how this offense will look. But I think in terms of how it's actually run, if there's a difference there. And I believe that there is. It can be different. Well, we'll see, and 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 rest assured, if they come out in Cincinnati and go run, run, pass, and go three and out, you know, you're gonna hear, <laughs> you know, uh, but you're gonna have to give some, you know, we should we should hopefully at least when we roll through this all twenty two from this Bengals game, you know, see some see some things, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, there better be, there better be. Um, when when it, when the fans inevitably want to fire these guys, will they say fire Faulkner or fire Sullivan? It's like they got this dual role. It's kind of a mouthful to say both. What do you think they're going to go? Yeah, that's hard to fit on a sign, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's those game day to, signs got to get yeah, a little bit larger. It's hard to chant at the, at the McAfee uh, uh, <laughs> uh, ESPN Saturday game day and all like that. Look, I, I, it, it, it will be evident, I feel like, if they're making, you know, you got seven games. That's a lot of mm -hmm. games. You got seven games uh that you should be able to put the finger on whether or not any, any, any of this is working. Just to backtrack, and I apologize for doing that. I, I probably shouldn't, but why do you think this move, this move was announced today, not Monday? I mean, I, I know the game plan does not get presented until tomorrow to the team, but you thought if a move was going to be made, it'd be made Monday to get it off as soon as possible. Uh, a, the players, I think, mostly are out of the building probably today. Uh, so they're not, they're not met with the media and having to, uh, 
because Mike Tomlin claimed that he didn't tell the team, and and that that's probably because they most of them weren't there. It's probably not something you want to release during a group chat. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my biggest thing is it lets them sit on it uh, on the outside and think maybe what they're going mm. to say when they do Good start point. beating the media on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, and and maybe get coached up a little bit bit on that stuff, and maybe actually get to uh, meet with Faulkner and. And 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 Sullivan to kind of the direction, yeah. You know, that way they're just not. That that's just my thought on it. I mean, yeah, it, that's a good uh, point. You're right. Uh, I, I I obviously don't know, but uh, uh, I mean, I I had to think that was a hell of a damn. Did they take the bus back from Cleveland? That was probably a hell. I, I I rode with you that one to you and David O for one time from Pittsburgh to uh uh Canton, 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 Canton and, and that was a pretty long ride. I imagine it was a pretty long ride. <laughs> Uh, coming back from that game uh, the the other day against Cleveland and having to having to look at that tape and all, uh, and, and we didn't just lose thirteen to ten, David no, o and I. No, we, we were we were winners. Um, no, I I, I think you guys you're right are about always that. winners in my book. Oh, well, that that picks my spirits up. Thank you, Dave. Um, no, I, I that's, a, that's a good answer. I think that's probably a, a salient point on that. I just wonder when the decision decision was actually made by Tomlin. Was it Monday? Was it Tuesday morning? He woke up and kind of it slept might have on been it. The Sunday on the bus. And he, <laughs> he probably was on the bus. And he's like, I always tell you, let let's let's you know, anytime that we're making a big decision, let's let's sleep on it. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so interesting. Just just wanted to kind of pick your brain on that. But again, regardless of of the play calling, Kenny Pickett has to be better. And yeah. there won't be no longer is the excuse of Matt Canada around. I mean, you can try to shift it to different people, but you can only do that for so long. And Kenny Pickett has missed stuff. We talked about it Monday. There was stuff that was open that, that Kenny Pickett missed. And so he has to be better. Otherwise, it's not going to matter what the play calls are, who the coaches are. It's going to be similar results. Look, might 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 we see an interception or two moving forward? Well, if the by if, if the overall byproducts more explosive plays and put more points on the board, can this defense help overcome an an, an interception or, or two at times uh, potentially? We, you, look, you've got a first round quarterback. You got to you got to get this guy playing better, you know, uh, and and you just can't have him. Uh, uh, comp- you know, have, having a- average average air yard completion distances of two point something or three point something yards. So uh, you got to start. I mean, he's been around long enough. He started enough games and uh, past the twenty game mark and all like that. You you got to start seeing what you got there and seeing it. What what more you can get out of? And look, Mike Tomlin, you know, standing by him. And we got the football. I'm uh, am I am I going to end up getting a football justice uh, tattoo, Alex? Uh, mm-hmm. By 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 the time he's got a long ways to go to have a six point. What did I say? Six point two adjusted net yards for the season. I mean. Uh, it can be done though. Uh, uh, he's just under 5.0 now. So it would take a, a pretty decent final seven yeah, games. going to need like seven and a half to probably get there to finish out the year. That would be a good, I might get one if he puts that up and <laughs> it, it, just, just, just to hold up my end of the bargain there. It's good, good problem to have, but Mike Tom, look, Mike Tomlin believes in if there's one if there's one other takeaway we can take away from the press conference today. Mike Tomlin believes in Kenny Pickett and the hard work he does, and he is a believer that because of that hard work and 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 the way the way this kid's uh, dedicating himself, that football justice will will prevail here. And that was clear before. It's pretty clear this team's going to give Kenny Pickett the chance over Matt Canada, saying we we stand by Pickett. He's going to be the guy, and probably more. Thoughts he's going to be the quarterback in 2024, regardless of whether that's right or wrong. They're going to sit there and say, you know, Canada was the reason, at least the bigger reason, and push him out and bring somebody in next year. Um, before we kind of just briefly mention maybe potential candidates, just on Sullivan, Faulkner, those guys, Sullivan, uh, literally in the Army, disciplined coach, quarterback coach, two-time Super Bowl winner, coached up Eli Manning. Um, I, I think he's a nuts and bolts kind of guy, and so I think he's going to be right for the job, at least of the internal candidates you had to go off of. Faulkner, the longest tenured offensive coach in Pittsburgh, if you can believe that, hired since uh, 2019. Um, I think he's done a good job, of course, developing Jalen Warren. Always talked about his practice drills were really inventive and interesting and something new each day to kind of break up the monotony of practice. Always kind of something new they're repping. Uh, Ball security, really, really big point of emphasis, as I know it is for essentially all running backs coaches, but on Faulkner, just different drills to, to work that right offensive line. He's a former OC, briefly over a decade ago at Ball State, actually was also their interim head coach. At the end of the 2010 season, he became the interim Ball State head coach. He did not actually coach uh, in that capacity in a game, but that was for like a month or so span before they hired somebody else. So he actually does have a tiny bit of 
uh, that head coaching experience at the college rank. So um, interesting to see, you know, what he'll bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who, who, uh, I thought you were going to ask me, who is this more a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a dress rehearsal for, uh, of the two. And really it's both of them because if both of them mm-hmm. don't, if both of them don't get the job done, I, I, I can't foresee one being kept in the, because if you bring in a new coordinator after this year, they're probably going to want to bring in, uh, you know, people that they want, want surrounding some offensive players. Yeah. In there. Sullivan, maybe I think Faulkner, I, I contractually, I don't know what their statuses are. Right, but true. I, I think Faulkner could stick around. The running backs coach might, might stay the same. But I mean, it's it's a big dress re- dress rehearsal mm-hmm. was 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 kind of the word I'm looking for there. Uh, it, it's big for both of them. And once again, if 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 you get some positive at, uh, and move move the offense in the, in in Kenny in in a in the right direction, but but all albeit not a big one, uh, those guys will still be at risk. To me, to me, you've got to. I think you've got to see a noticeable at the end of these seven games of man that was. That's 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 quite a turnaround there for for both these guys to stick, and for know, and, and and probably for Eddie to technically become the the next OC. I, I would I would think that that that's the way it would go if 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 they do a good job. Yeah, I know we're getting way out in, in front, but if Faulkner were to be the guy, you know, the OC next year, he never called plays this year. So how do you evaluate that in terms of him potentially becoming the full time OC next year for a guy that will technically have never uh, called a play despite being the interim OC? Um, maybe but- you don't. Maybe you don't fix what's not broken, you know. You, you think both guys could become permanent uh, position? And I know we're way ahead of ourselves. Yeah, that to me that'd be a good, 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 good conversation yeah. for us to even be thinking about. Right, it means things have gone well this year to, to round out twenty twenty three. So yeah, the question is, you know, if those guys do a good job, could they stick around in their capacities? That's on the table. Uh, Mike Tomlin did not comment on that today. He just talked about, you know, he pulled the bell check. We're on to Cincinnati kind of thing, mm-hmm. but that's where the team's focus has to be. Um, we'll talk about it more tomorrow, Dave. We'll talk about it forever in the off season. I'll probably hopefully have an article for the morning, kicking around some ideas, some names. I've had done that a little bit so far. I'll do that a lot more tonight. Um, any thoughts on outside candidates, you know, after the season that could be potential permanent replacements? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the name Daryl Bevel came up last night in our, in our, uh, live stream, you know, obviously the name of left, which is going to be out there. Um, uh, you know, Dorsey's free right now. Uh, I, I haven't given it much thought other than kind of those names that have been circulated out, you know, kind of that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to go back to my list. I mean, I was making just a list of names, you know, around the bye week in case something were to happen. Bevel was on there. I mean, left, which is going to be talked about a ton. Uh, you had former Steelers, Willie Cologne, Plexico Burris calling for that. Ben had mentioned that just a couple weeks ago, right before Halloween, that he would like to see left, which be the next OC. The track record is, and I'm not saying that they should do this, but the track record is basically every Steelers offensive coordinator has some sort of tie to Pittsburgh before ascending into that role, whether it's uh, internal names like Randy Feetner and Matt Canada. And those guys had a relationship prior to Canada being hired as the quarterback's coach from Todd Haley, who was a ball boy in Pittsburgh. Dick Haley, of course, longtime front office member, all the other internal names, Bruce Arians, Ken Wisnett, et cetera. So if you want a left which connection, and, and we love connecting our dots, Dave, I'm not saying they should do it, but that is a name that's going to be talked about a lot, I'm sure. And, and I think he probably will get an, an interview as well. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 c- I can certainly see it. But look, they, you know, we'll, we'll kind of wind this down with saying they got to score more points. <laughs> you know, uh, we got to see this thing 20, 21, 22 points for, for in my opinion, uh, average in these in these seven games for uh, for for Faulkner slash uh, Sullivan to be in con- consideration as sticking, in my opinion. What I wrote today was in terms of scoring more points, it's yeah. that simple. It's not that easy though for this Steelers right. team. But but that is that is the goal. That it's a bottom line business. This team has to score more, more points. They can limp into the playoffs with the model they're on, sure, especially with a favorable schedule, but they can't win a playoff game under the model that they're they're working with or the production they're getting right now. So that's gonna be the mission going forward. And look, they have talent surrounding Kenny Pickett on the offensive side of football right now. Knock on wood. They've, they've got, you know, they've got some healthy, they're a lot healthier, obviously on the offensive side of football than they are on the defensive side of football mm-hmm. uh, right now. So it's not like uh, uh, Eddie Faulkner and, and, and Mike Sullivan are going into this with her hate with one, one hand tied behind her back. Right. Sure. The question is how much talented they have at quarterback is the ultimate question. We know there's talented receiver. We know there's talented at running back. The offensive lines improving. How talented is the quarterback? Steve? Million dollar question. Right, right. 
Got to get him. Got to hit. Got to get. Got to see some noticeable difference in his play in these final seven games. End of story. And then points better be a byproduct of mm-hmm. that. No question, Dave. We'll talk about more the uh, Canada outlook and fallout tomorrow. Uh, just really quickly, two other notes to hit uh, hit here. Actually, three. Uh, Pittsburgh just making a roster move. Uh, what's the? I think they signed defensive back Henry Black to the practice squad. Release linebacker Tyler Murray. Uh, just some injury protection type stuff there. Black has a bit of NFL experience. I believe with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, team also reportedly, although not official uh, by Pittsburgh as, as of this recording, signing linebacker Blake Martinez off the Carolina Panthers 53, or excuse me, off the Panthers practice squad to Pittsburgh's 53 man roster. Martinez, like Miles Jack, uh, retired last year and then unretired about a month ago, less than a month ago, signed with the Panthers uh, practice squad uh, in early November and is now being signed to Pittsburgh's 53 man roster. So I imagine they're going to try to work him in as quickly as they can. And Shaq Leonard also being weighed by the Colts today. That's a pretty headline news of the day here. He was unhappy with his role with Indianapolis. He's now been waived. Uh, pretty high salary that could be potentially claimed. If he goes unclaimed, though, then you wonder if Pittsburgh will be in the market. Yeah, look, uh, six something million left on his contract this year. And and once you get past the trade deadline every year, all players are, are uh, relegated to the waiver wire process. Uh, he's got a uh, couple years, uh, uh, expensive years past this year on that deal, albeit no guaranteed money. There's some roster bonuses in there that need to be decided each March and all like that. Uh, the biggest obstacle, look, if the Steelers, deem him as someone they think can still play uh, in every down role and uh, be worthy of that $6 million. Technically right now they don't have the salary cap space for it, but you just pull a pen and paper out on, on TJ Watt, maybe do a quick restructure right. there. Uh, you can make this work if you wanted to ensure that you got him uh, via the waiver process. So uh, the big question is, is how much does he have left in the tank versus what's left on, on his salary this year? Uh, but if he does clear waivers, then he will get the say of where he goes. And the, you'd have to think that he would, wouldn't would mind playing for Mike Tomlin. That'd be my guess as well, a playoff contending team. Um, a, a good culture, a team that's looking for help with that position. I mean, obviously he could be claimed. It wouldn't shock me, but for that salary, and I think just as importantly, he was not happy with his role with the Colts. He wanted to be an every now and guy. He's right. lost that role. He's had some injuries and some neck injuries over the years. And he was still playing, I think, a back, lot of snaps, but back, back, back injured, was it back? Yeah. yeah. Something like that, all related. Um, and so do you do you claim that guy and just hope he likes the fit at that kind of money? I think if you're a team, obviously you're gonna maybe you're gonna communicate with him. I I, I would imagine with his agency, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like he's got a better chance to go through waivers than people think right now. Yeah, he uh, and look, I haven't looked around to see who needs what, but you know, uh, I, I wouldn't think that any team not in contention would go that route. Although they could if they had the cap space. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we'll know in we'll we'll know in twenty four hours, assuming that his his. Uh, I, I think the Colts announced that on their on their Twitter feed that he's been waived. So I would right. think if that happened before today, it would become official at four o'clock. So then it becomes. You know, uh, four o'clock uh, the, the 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 next day there. Uh, if I was to bet, I would I would bet he'd clear waivers. But also, six million is not all that daunting to some team out there if they really really needed him. But if he, right. I would think the Steelers' chances go. Uh, I would think they would go up some of getting him if he does clear waivers. The question is, though, let's assume he does clear waivers. What contract does he want? He probably is not going to play for the minimum, you know, so there's that whole thing to tackle. Yeah, I would think a couple of million or something like or, you know, he probably ain't going to want to do a multi-year deal either. No. You know, uh, at this point, he's wanting to probably still show that he's got it in a half. Uh, look, Omar's got a way of getting these guys to agree to these <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, veteran benefit contracts, at, you know, at, at points here. And there, there probably is a lot of question marks about Shaquille uh, right now. Right. So. Uh, why not say come in and help lead us, you know, uh, to to a to a playoff run, and you'll probably get get paid somewhere. Sure. Just my other last thought is, I know Leonard's just our speculation, but we know Martinez is, is coming, and Jack's been signed. This team does not trust Mark Robinson one no, bit. I we mean, talked about signed, that. We did. They've signed now two recently retired linebackers, one electrician, one selling Pokemon cards. Had a big scandal about that. 
and probably bumping out Mark Robinson and keeping him on special teams, assuming he stays on the roster and, uh, at all. So I don't know what the issue is with Mark Robinson, but there, there's some big hang up there, Dave, with him. They just yeah. don't trust that guy to play defense. Yeah, look, and then uh, that goes back to what Terrell Austin said before the season now, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. kind of putting two and two together and getting four here. But uh, anyway, we'll see what we have to uh, tell these folks on the uh, Wednesday podcast, right? See what we see what we wake up to on Wednesday. Right. It's been a crazy day. Uh, been a great day though for the site, and great job by the team. Great job by you, Dave, and appreciate you guys checking it out. And uh, we'll we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex at Alex Kazor, Al- Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and want to donate to the cause, SteedersDepot.com, hit the donate button. Also, if you like an ad free version, SteedersDepot.com, hit the ad free. Hope you enjoyed this 45 minutes. And until Wednesday morning, tomorrow, as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex.